Ooh, what oh chaps, I'm Magical Mike. Let's talk about the battle for Lion's Arch. Apparently, the miasma blew off out into the harbour, which is utterly silly, if you ask me. Seems like a cop-out reason, but whatever. It does mean that Lion's Arch is now accessible whenever we want. Most of the waypoints are still contested, but you can still explore it in your own time regardless. There are a bunch of champions and events and stuff to do. You know, the standard sort of stuff that we normally get in these patches. Some you can do on your own, but most of them require a group. The Miasma containers and the champions, for example. If you can do those solo, then well done you. Already though, I am seeing a loss of interest in doing those side of events, and before long, Nobody's going to want to do those, and no one's going to want to help out with those things, so hurry up and get them done if you haven't already. Honestly though, it's just another Zerg update for the living story that I didn't really find much to do in. Beat the achievements, get a few events and dailies done, and then never go back. That's not such a bad thing these days, but there isn't much longevity to these events. The meat of the patch is the three giant fights with the knights that happen every hour, and the giant hologram fight on top of the drill. There's also the instance part, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes. These coloured knights have new buffs on them, and they use the orange tails on the ground that we found in the marionette fights to let you know of their attacks. Annoyingly, they reflect conditions most of the time, and I really wanted to play my engineer here, so any time that the buff is up, you end up wrecking yourself with condition spikes and things. It makes the fights kind of awful for engies and necros and anyone else spec for conditions. However, sometimes that buff changes to the exact opposite thing, where the knights are super weak to condies. I haven't tried melee in the fights, but from looking at all the corpses lying around, I'd say it probably isn't worth it. So anyway, you've got a time limit to kill these three things, and you should stand in the coloured areas near each one of them to get a damage buff. They used to apply to everybody, but now these buffs only applies to 50 people maximum. So ArenaNet are encouraging splitting up the giant Zerg, which is nice, but considering it's still pretty Zergy anyway, and the final hologram is also still a huge Zerg, I don't know how much of a difference it's actually made. Once the three knights are dead, you can grab the coloured buffs and head on up to the drill for the almost final showdown. I actually really like the fight with the hologram. It's not hard at all, but it still takes some positioning tactics, and that's really what was fun about it. What wasn't particularly fun is the incredible spam effect thing, especially with the uh, sigils of fire. It becomes impossible to really see what the hell's going on, and you'll see in the footage that it's just a horrible, horrible mess, but you know, that's, that's kind of Guild Wars 2 at the moment. I'm not going to go into too much detail really, but you need to grab all three of the coloured buffs to be able to damage it, while avoiding the electric lines on the floor. If you don't have all three buffs, then I think you just end up hurting yourself when you get a certain amount of stacks, so try not to do that, you big, silly... Billy... I don't ask, I don't know. At a certain point, after it's taken a bunch of damage, it splits up into three separate bosses with different mechanics to them, and you need to take those down as well. In the footage, each of these splits into more versions of themselves, which need to be killed as well, but if you kill the three main ones around the same time as each other, they don't split up and you can continue the fight and it makes it easier, which is a nice little almost hidden mechanic to the fight. It's good. Then there's the ads section to wrap it up, and that's the fight, really. It's cool that the NPCs revive you and that it's a decent fight overall. It's about the level I'd hope for, for most world bosses. It's not hard. It's not that easy. I mean, it is still quite easy. It just requires more than just simply stacking up and auto-attacking. Bit of positioning, bit of moving around. Always good to see. Thumbs up from me, that's for sure. The final instance is, uh, well, there's problems and there's highlights. I got really angry when Brahm cut Scarlet off. I mean, really angry at that. I could not believe how much of a kick in the face that was. I was happy with the overall increase, increased quality on the animations and the cutscenes, and I was very pleased to see the reveal teaser at the end. Let's hope that the hype is warranted, and that a few things can be wrapped up in the final update of the season. And let's look forward to Season 2 of The Living World and hope that it doesn't fall flat on its face like Season 1 generally has done. Anyway, the final verdict for the patch is that it's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> not bad. It's a ringing a ringing endorsement from me, I know. It's not fantastic, but the cutscene and the hologram boss are definitely worth your time. 
and thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.